All right, so this is kind of just a quick intro video for those of you who may not have used Trados before or have used it limitedly. Um, so I just double click the desktop icon for SDL Trados Studio and it won't ever stop loading. And so here's one of the quirks with Trados Studio is that if there's some dialog box that you need to click in order for Studio to finish loading, it won't come to the forefront. You can actually see a dialog box behind here a little bit. And also, if you move your mouse all the way to the right, you'll get the taskbar on the Amazon Workspace. I have the taskbar set up on the right, so it doesn't in interfere with your own computer's taskbar, which is probably top and bottom. And so you can see here, there's actually two windows for Trotto Studio. So this is a qualitivity um, dialog box when you start up Trados, it'll often do this and you can just hit no for this one and then Trados should finish loading okay so once you've opened up Trados I'm just gonna go through some of the the key things to know about how the program is laid out you've got different um, views to be accessed with these buttons down here on the bottom left so what you see in the top ribbon and the whole screen will completely change depending on the view. So welcome view looks like this. You won't see any projects to open. But if you are in the projects view, you can see how it's highlighted down there. You will see the one project that has been set up for your experiment session. And just double click on it to open it. And then you'll see all of the files in it. You should see um, a number of files. And to open these in the editor, you can see we've jumped from the projects view to the files view. Now to open these in the editor, you can either double click on them or hit open for translation. I'm just going to double click on text one here. And that will bring us into the editor view. It'll open up the document. It automatically activates the first segment in the document and it's populating it from the translation memory. Now really this is machine translation output. We've put it in the translation memory just because we need to keep the machine translation output the exact same for every participant. So that's why it's in a, a translation memory and I've given it a 5% penalty so it says 95% match here. But this blue pencil means that it's draft it's not confirmed yet and normally you'd see a blue box here with the letters AT for automatic translation when the segment is um, being populated from machine translation so just pretend that these are all machine translation um, because they are they are machine translation and you can see that we're now in the editor view and if I go all the way to the right I've put the taskbar on the very right for the Amazon workspace so that it doesn't interfere with the taskbar from your computer, which is probably on the top and bottom. So I go all the way to the right here, and you can select a Spanish keyboard. You could even load a new Spanish keyboard if you don't like any of these right here. Um, but that's how you'll get um, a Spanish keyboard so you can get the special characters you need, accents and whatnot, and yay, and the different um, punctuation marks that you need. So you can edit normally within the active segment and when you're ready to move on to the next segment, make sure um, well, there's two things you can do. You can just move on to the next segment with your mouse. And once you activate the next segment, wait a little bit and it will populate the machine translation output. Also, you could confirm the segment that you were working on previously. Confirming a segment in Trados is basically saying, I'm finished with the segment. As far as I know, it's um, all I'm going to do to the segment, it's ready to go. And you can confirm three different ways, well, two different ways with a hotkey or with this confirm button. So I can confirm the segment with the confirm button. Um, uh, 
or I can confirm with a hotkey. If you're using Windows, you'd hold down Control and hit Enter. If you're using Mac, you'd hold down Command and hit Enter. It's just one of the quirks if it's a, a remote desktop for Amazon Workspace, um, you still need to use Command Enter even though it's now a Windows machine, a virtual Windows machine. And in the bottom right here, we can see how many of our segments are not translated, 64%, are draft, 7%, that's this one segment, that's the blue pencil. And if they're confirmed, there'll be a green pencil with a green check mark. And we can see right here, we've got 28%, you know, those two segments that are confirmed. So you just need to go along um, editing the rest of, of the document. Okay, so I'm on that last segment here of this document. You can see 90% done. Almost all the segments are confirmed except this one. You'll notice in this experiment some of the files you work on will have highlighting, others won't. These are basically formatting tags, but it's okay if when you're editing some of the highlighting um, isn't there in the target segment. It's also okay if it is there in the target segment. Either way works. So I've finished um, editing this last segment. I'll confirm it. And that doesn't mean that you're necessarily done. It's okay, for example, to go back to a segment that's already confirmed and make an edit. Um, I can, for example, go to this segment. As soon as I make an edit, it's going to go back to a blue pencil. It's going to show that it's draft stage. It's unconfirmed. But then I can confirm it again. And so once you're done editing all of the segments, you want to save the document. And then closing the editor, this is the most important part of the experiment. Because closing the editor, editor will stop the timer. Um, your keystrokes are being logged as you translate. And so once you close the document, that's when the timestamps stop for your keystrokes on this document. Otherwise, the timer will keep running. And so there's a lot of different X's that you can hit on this window. And it's not this one. It's not this one. It's not this one in the very top right, which will close the whole program. It's this one right down here where it says close document when you hover over it. And when you close the document, you'll get a qualitivity dialog box that will pop up. And it's absolutely crucial that you do not hit X, that you do not hit cancel. It's crucial that you hit OK so that it saves your time, um, your keystroke log for this post editing session. So we hit OK there. We can see that we're 100% done with that first text. And we can double click on the second one to open it. And we can edit it as normal as well. OK, and when I'm done editing uh, the second document, I can then close it. And if you get any of these little red X's, which are errors or, or, or warning messages, if it's a warning, it will be a, a yellow triangle. Just ignore them. You don't need to worry about them at all for this experiment. So I'm done editing. I'll close the document. Because I didn't hit save, this reminder pops up. Just say yes to save the changes. And once again, the qualitivity dialog box will pop up. Crucial that you hit OK for this. Absolutely crucial. So it saves the keystroke log. And once you're done with all of the, all of the files that you were assigned in your project, then all you have to do is, and this will be a little bit tricky because of all the things that want to pop up, but all you have to do is close Trotto Studio. Hit the X there. And then you can quit Amazon Workspaces and just email me and tell me that you're done. But really, I have a whole nother video that explains, you know, um, the important things for this experiment. This was just mainly to explain Trotto Studio for those who haven't used Trotto Studio ever or in a while, just so there's a good refresher.